Hello. I appear to have picked the thread. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the latest episode of my knitting and creative podcast. My name on Instagram is Orchid's Heart and I'm coming to you from Birmingham. Um, apologies for the kind of diffused light on the right here. Um, it's quite a gloomy day so I just wanted to sit in the brightest place I can which at the moment is here. Um, and it does a weird thing to the right hand side of my camera but hopefully I can share, you, share with you my knits and things on this side here. Um, this is going to be quite a straightforward episode, just a standard catch up on my current knitting projects, how I'm getting on with my autumn knit plans um, and so it will be unedited which might mean that you need to put headphones on or use an external speaker to hear me a bit better because normally I do turn the volume up in editing to make it a bit better. Um, and I'm not using a microphone, well, my new microphone, because I haven't worked it out yet. And to be honest, um, I'm a bit overwhelmed and fried at the moment, so I didn't want to add any more to that. Hence the um, straight to upload, uh, no maintenance, no editing video today. So I hope that's okay. So that does mean uh, if there's any disturbances, you just have to watch them play through, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, but I don't think it'll be a particularly long episode. Hopefully it'll be just a nice little catch up. I hope everyone's doing well. I hope you're not feeling fried. Um, I'm feeling fried because I realised yesterday that it is the 12th of November. So in three weeks, I'm doing my yearly craft fair, which I do at work. One of those weekends, uh, and I work full time, so I've got, I think, two weekends. One of those weekends I'm away visiting family in Suffolk because I need my mother-in-law to try on her Christmas presents so far um, so that I know whether I'm knitting it to the right size or not. It's on for Christmas. And then I have a weekend and then it's the craft fair. Um, so, which even though it's at work, I'm doing my own time at the weekend because it's for me, not for work. And so I've been making candles and things like that to sell there. Um, I really love showing my handmade things um, at Christmas time and it's really nice being able to do that locally. It's also for me a really nice way to gather some funds together to like invest in equipment or materials or things that my normal um, financial situation can't afford for me. So um, I plan this year to create a bit of a um, financial stash because I think over the next year or so as mentioned last time, things are going to be a bit more stretched because we are hoping to move. There was a moment this week where I thought we would be buying the house all very suddenly, um, but for various complicated reasons, which I'm not going to go into. It's not happening quite that soon and I'm relieved because there's too much going on at the moment. So I'd quite like that one to wait a bit longer. So I hope you're doing well. I hope you're enjoying the festive prep. I would like a bit more time to do some baking and things and sadly I'm not getting that at the moment so one of my goals this week is to sit down and realistically think about what I need to achieve and what I want to achieve between now and Christmas um, and see whether I've piled too much onto myself or whether actually I'm doing okay. So whether that be with presents or just general prep um, etc. So. I have not done a knitting update I think for a little while because I think my last video was about Rhinebeck, I think. I think that's right. I feel like it wasn't, I feel like that's wrong. <laughs> so I can't remember, so that's good. Um, but I feel like it wasn't a standard episode or at least I didn't share all of the things I've been working on whilst I was away, just leading up to going away, um, and then since coming back. So, as most people that went to Rhinebeck, I had a bit of a panic before going about what am I gonna wear. Initially I was like, I'm not gonna get into that because I own loads of beautiful clothes I've made. I'm sure I can just wear something I've already got. No one's seen it before anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then I thought, I had like this mad thought about two weeks before going that I would knit a vest. And then I got halfway through knitting it, like manically knitting it, and then thought, I'm not going to wear this in Rhinebeck, so why am I knitting it? Um, but I have finished it and I'm wearing underneath this. So I'm going to explain what I'm wearing because I'm wearing quite a few me maids. Um, it's absolutely freezing in, freezing in here. 
and I don't normally have bare arms. My long sleeve top is poking out under my sleeves, but the long sleeve top didn't look great with this dress and the vest I made looks really nice with this dress I wanted to show you. Uh, full transparency, once I've been recording this, I'm going to take the vest and dress off and put some really warm scruffy clothes on top. <laughs> so um, I might wear this combination to work tomorrow. The first thing you can see is my underwing mitts. The name of the designer is Erica something and I've shared these with you before. Um, I knit these using Grenwy Fiberco uh, minis, two different shades of grey. So I had one mini um, for each mitt in the dark colour and then I used just under half a mini of the neutral um, on both and it is supposed to have some extra colour work on the wings but I couldn't be bothered like you duplicate stitch it um, at the end and so one is slightly lighter than the other I think it's this one um, but honestly the difference is so minimal that I'm not bothered and I think it's um that's like because it's two different dye lots I think it's the same colour but because I got them in two different mini skein sets it's a different dye lot but um I think they're really lovely I'm also wearing my Fern and Feather in Rustic Broom 4-ply by Daughter of a Shepherd. And so it's not meant to be one colour, it's actually meant to have like, I think, a fingering weight and then a lace weight and then you have different panels. Um, and I did knit one like that, but I knit this one just in this rustic um, fingering weight. And it's mostly garter and then it has... Oh, I've just found like a seed head. Funny story about that. Take a second. Ugh, come off. Um, it has, but maybe the lace panels are somewhere else. It's hard to see because it's so dark. There are some there, but you're probably not really going to see. Like a fan. Is it called fan in lace? So when we were in America, on, I think it was one of the last few days, and um, we went, no, it was on the last day actually. We were going for a walk um, to break up the drive to Milwaukee, is that how you say it, from Chicago and um, I bent down to take a photo of a mushroom or something and then walked away and I'm not even kidding, in that couple of seconds I got covered from the waist down in the most sticky seed head. We call similar things in England sweethearts. Um, but they're not that bad. These were awful. I think if they got on your dog, you'd have to shave the dog. Um, covered. And I went, I got really stressed out. To be honest, it kind of ruined my mood for the walk. Um, because I wanted to take all these lovely pictures and then I was just spent the rest of the walk pulling them all off me. Um, but underneath, anyway, I am wearing my dress and my first finished object. So my dress is a linen merchant, um, linen dress made in fabric from Merchant and Mills. Um, maybe it doesn't go with this, I'm not sure, tell me what you think. Um, it's got like these balloon sleeves and I struggle to wear knitwear with this because of the sleeves. I don't really have anything that has such big sleeves and so I thought a vest would be really good. And so, and I'll put in the notes the name of the pattern because it's not a name, it's a number and I never remember it. Um, but this is my first finished object. This is the... Gondor vest by Fable Knitwear and I knit it in um, Wild Wool by Erica Knight. Which is a single ply wool and nettle fibre um, blend and it's Aran White and in the colour Poodle, Poodle which means to like wander. Um, and I knit the second size, I think, but it's a bit tight. <laughs> I think I knit the second size. So it is actually a bit longer, but because the waist of this dress is higher, I did tuck the bottom in. Maybe you can see it better there. Um, I really like the colour. I am hoping it will stretch out a bit. Um, I'm trying to remember what modifications I made. Um, maybe I didn't make any. Uh, the neckline is meant to be a folded over neckline, which I've done. I did... 
trying to think. Did I do tube? I think I did tubular bind off of the armholes. And then I did an extra stretchy bind off and then whip stitch down the neckline. Because I did bind it off kind of normally before and then I couldn't get it over my head. No, I definitely knit the neckband once and could it get, couldn't get it on. So I think I picked up more stitches than recommended. And then did an extra stretchy bind off. Yeah, that was it. I ended up doing the neck twice because the first one couldn't get over my head. And it is a push to get it on. Um, so once I've got it on, I've kind of got it on for the day. Because if I've done my hair, it will ruin it. <laughs> but as you can see, when I say do my hair, I don't really do my hair. Um, so yeah, it's probably fine. So I'm hoping it will grow a bit with ways, which it probably will. Ribbing does tend to. But I do feel very much like I've been <laughs> in. So that's my first finished object. Um, I am curious to see how it will wear because it is a single ply yarn. I wonder if the rib will make it a little bit more hard wearing with the texture. Um, we shall see. I do think it not having arms will maybe make it a bit better in terms of friction here. So, yeah. But it's a really soft yarn. I did buy it originally to make the... Taylor's Rib Beanie by Albiona. Um, but then I decided something that's got so much nettle fibre in it isn't very warm and I get really cold ears. Which is why I thought this might be better because I thought if it was nettle and wool that's not so intense. And that might be quite good for office wearing. So I'll test that out and see how it goes. So for someone who really doesn't enjoy rib knitting, <laughs> I did quite a lot of rib knitting before... Um, and after going to Rhinebeck, because this is all in rib, one by one rib. My next project is in three by three rib, and you'll have to forgive me because I have not trimmed the ends. And so another vest of a different kind. This is the more accurate colour representation. So this is the My Secret Little Crop by Jessie Made Designs. Yeah, that's a good colour. And I also knit this in Grunwee Fibre Co. Um, I had, I bought two sock sets by them last year. Um, one of them had this lovely green colour and then the, the whitish colour in here and and maybe one of the blacks actually it might have been those three yeah it was um and i thought one skein of fingering weight sock yarn held double would knit me one of these tops and i'd have some left over for socks i was so wrong i had to use a coordinating mini from my precious stash to finish it my um entire skein got me as far as um just before this bit and the straps so when i knit one of these before and i was going to show you the one i knit before is one of these straps longer than the other so i haven't tried this on yet so i'm hoping it's okay might be slightly longer but it should be okay because there's quite a lot of give um if not i can unpick and so that's the straps the straps aren't a big deal i knit the ripple bralette using a four ply weight held single because it's a four ply pattern uh, maybe two years ago and it took me forever to knit and the first time I knit it, it was too short and I ended up ripping out the bottom um, rib and making that the one by one rib at the bottom longer because I was knitting in the opposite direction to the um, main rib in the jumper it would have been obvious if I'd carried on knitting the main body so because the stitches would have been slightly off so I cut off the one by one rib on that one and just knit loads more one by one, one by one rib to make it longer. So I was comparing the length of this to that one. Um, and, you know, if you were to knit it as per the pattern where it's really short, like just under the boobs, you would be able to get um, one of those out of a fingering skein held double and have some left over. But to get the length I needed, I ended up using about 110 grams. So luckily I had this mini skein which actually draws on the other colours in this 
And that's why I wanted some of this left over because I wanted to make a pair of socks with these two because I thought they'd play together really well. Um, but I've ended up having that colour combo but in this instead. So I might wear this under my clothes um, whilst it's cold or I might put it away for when it gets warmer and save it for then. Um, but I do wear the other one quite a lot underneath things so just a little bit warm and cosy. I will be interested to see how this one feels being double the thickness to the other one because I do wear the other one when it's like warmer outside without a bra uh, because I'm I mean this is quite tight so it's giving the opposite impression but I'm actually quite flat chested um, so I don't need to wear a bra most of the time especially when it's hot I don't bother um, and so these are quite good because they're very form fitting so I don't need to worry about showing things I don't want to show so that was my second finished object and I knit a lot of this whilst on holiday and then finished it off when I got back because most of it is just ribbing without shaping and so that's a really easy thing to do when traveling so it's quite a good travel knit my other travel knit which is also in ribbing i kind of hated myself for giving myself so much ribbing but i don't really like ribbing um is a pair of socks i've been wanting to knit for ages excuse the line from the radiator I know I'm having a bit of a colour mood situation going on here. So these are some basic 3 by one socks um, using Half DK by, no, Half Sport Weight, it's not 4 ply, by Woolly Mammoth Fibre Co. So this is her sock yarn um, in this kind of grungy brown colour. And then I held it with a strand of Knitting for Olive Mohair which I've never used before. So that's silk mohair. Because this is a plastic free yarn and I wanted to hold it with a strand of silk mohair to make them a bit stronger, but also because I did start knitting some ripped socks in this and I found it really tedious and I didn't enjoy it. Um, I have to admit, I'm not sure how I feel about this as a sock yarn. I don't think I love it. I didn't enjoy knitting with it so much on its own. Um, I think I just got bored because it was just brown socks. And I have knit plain socks before, but in really gorgeous feeling yarn. And that's what keeps me going. And that didn't feel gorgeous. So um, I knit these on slightly bigger needles. I think 2.75 and cast on a lot less stitches. Um, and I'm going to be honest, they are slightly different sizes because didn't really know what I was doing and I was traveling so I hope they'll be okay like one heel is slightly smaller than the other don't know if you can see that um, and the contrast I used was um, Amble by the fiber company and this is the color Fair Hill and it's actually a really lovely complicated color is it gonna focus I don't think it is focusing, but I think you can see different colours. Was it doing? Oh, yeah, I don't think it is. I think I think that's as good as you're going to get with the uh, rear view camera. It's got lots of different shades in there. Um, can you refocus? Yeah, I think it's alright. So, but it's that colour, <laughs> not the colour you could see when it was closer. And so I use that on the heels and toes because there is recycled nylon in that yarn. So that gave me a bit more assurance that it'd be hard wearing. I have to say though, my, my, my friend and I have knit quite a few pairs of socks in this yarn. We don't feel it is the most hard wearing and I suspect that's the alpaca content in there. Um, but it is really snuggly. So these are going to be house socks. And if I'm honest, I'm probably going to put them on after this because they've got a longer leg than I normally knit. Um, and they look like they'd be super cosy. So I just hope that my dodgy knitting on the go skills will hold up. I knit the heel of the slightly dodgy one whilst I was in a museum and I made a mistake and I had to fix my mistake, like unpick and pick up and do some like strange stuff whilst walking around the spaceship museum. <laughs> So we went on two days on the trot, we went to two very big museums in America. The first day was the Ford Museum, 
which was quite expensive to go to, so you know, we wanted to make the most of it. And the second day was um, the Air Airspace Museum in Ohio. I think it was, maybe it wasn't, maybe it was near Ohio. Um, so quite a bit of a drive. Was it that way around or was it the other way around? It might have been, I feel like the planes did come second. Oh no, hold on. I think the Ford Museum is in Detroit. I think we went to Detroit and then Ohio. No, we didn't do any big museums in Chicago. I'm sorry, I probably got it completely wrong. We went to the Ford Museum and then we went the next day to a really big museum all about planes. We had to drive quite a long way to get there. He really wanted to go. Um, and like four hours, four to five hours in a museum is more than I can handle. So I was knitting my socks whilst in those museums. Um, but you know, if you've ever walked around knitting, it's quite hard to fix mistakes when you make mistakes. And I'm pretty sure people were staring at me like, this is really unpatriotic of you, because it's all about American military. Um, you're knitting socks and not paying attention to the, the glory of the military, whatever was the vibe I got um, from all of these like military enthusiast old men that were predominantly who was there. Um, I had to actually sit down and hide in the corner because I got so tired, because I was a bit unwell. I got so tired and so I just sat in the corner and knit and people were looking at me like, why is she here? It's like, because my boyfriend is obsessed and he's an engineer. He thinks he could fly a plane purely on the basis that he's watched enough YouTube videos about it. So there we go. Oh, right. I'm just going to grab my next project. So that's all my finished objects for the moment. I am working on my mother-in-law's um, Maya cardigan. Actually, that's reminded me, I've got mine here. I'm gonna add it to the pile of stuff I need to take with me at the weekend. Um, the light's going, which is a bit annoying. Um, hopefully this will be okay. It is the season of battling with perpetually grey days. I was laughing with um, Casey from Young Fit Knits. She posted something the other day about being a lover of rainy days. I was like, you're in the wrong place, you need to come here. And I think she was posting this, like I was on my last day or coming back from America and I got back and it was absolutely hysterically torrential rain, like a caricature of British rain. And it feels like it's rained pretty much every day since. <laughs> but I think that might be standard this time of year. It just, just gets very dark and it gets quite hard to film things. So I kind of have to take my moments um, where I can and um, it is kind of dark now in here, so I think we're due another rainstorm. But I've just got a couple more things to share with you, including this beauty. So before I went away, I was asked if I wanted to test knit this sock pattern by Stone Knits. If I'm honest, I saw a glimpse of it um, at this point a couple of months ago. She'd knit up to here. And I thought that is so beautiful. I wish I could test knit that. Um, but I was a bit stressed in the lead up to going away, wanting to have everything done and be prepared as much as I can for the craft fair when I came back and made 42 candles. Um, which is maybe not a lot for like people who make candles, but it is for me. I probably never made more than 10 in one go before. And um, she messaged me about a week before I went, or 10 days before I went, saying, would I test knit? And originally like the deal was to knit a whole pair. I was like, I can't knit a whole pair before I go away. And I definitely can't do that kind of pattern whilst I'm away. It's too complicated. Um, but I will knit you one before I go on holiday. I would love to test knit. I have all the yarn and stash. And it's beautiful. This is the colours. Definitely. I think when I bring it forwards, it just dulls it. Maybe. I'm using like the rear view camera so I can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to be easy on myself today. So this is knit in XML sock using the colours Odd Beam, Bibble Bug, and then the yellow is Drumble and the white is Mizzle. 
So I have like a reasonable Exmoor sock stash, although I'm starting to whittle it down now. Um, and these are the colours she designed the pattern in. Um, and so it's got a short row heel. And so the rest is just kind of knit in a tube and it is three stranded colour work. Now I was really apprehensive. I can't say that my my minimal exposure to three stranded colour work was not fun. I did not enjoy it. But these were beautiful and I thought, oh, it's a sock. I'm sure I can figure it out. And you know, if it was hell on earth and making me cry, then I just say, I'm sorry, Charlotte, I can't do it. Um, but I'm so glad I had a go because it was actually fine. So she recommends in the pattern that you don't twist your floats um, and that you just carry them. So you end up with something a bit like this. This stray one is an end I've not clipped and this is an end I've not clipped, not a really long loose float. You end up with this kind of scenario. So yes, you probably could catch your toes on here, um, but Exmoor sock is quite rustic and I actually think that they will stick together after it's been worn a few times. And I've tried this on a couple of times for taking pictures and to check it fits and I haven't caught my toes on it because I'm careful putting it on. Um, I don't think this is a sock I would wear in my boots and then go to the pub and get drunk and then come home and struggle to take my socks off. I think this would be a sock that I wear when I'm being more considerate about my clothing, which maybe sounds silly for a sock. Um, I've never knit a short, short row heel before, so I initially found that challenging and one side's definitely neater than the other, so I think I did something wrong. This side is neater than that side, this side's got a bit of a lump, so I think I was doing my increases or decreases wrong or yarning over wrong or something like that. Um, and my cuff is shorter than her cuff because I didn't have very much of this purple left. I knit an entire pair out of them recently, which I've sadly gifted to my mother because they were a bit too big for me. Um, but Charlotte recommends knitting, I think it was on 25 millimeter needles. But you'd have to check the pattern to be sure because I can't remember. So these are on a looser gauge than I'm used to. And for the vast majority of the sock that creates like a really soft, squishy, I would imagine warm sock, because I've only got one, so I've not worn them, so I don't know. And so, but the toe and the heel is single stranded. Now, I think if I was knitting these and I wasn't test knitting, I would be tempted to do some jiggery pokery and maybe decrease slightly the number of stitches but then knit the toe or do something so I could knit the toe and the heel in DK so it was thicker. I don't know how I would do that but that's what I would do because I do find it a little bit of a shame that the toe is thinner than the rest of the sock because it's all soft and squishy and then gets a bit thinner. So I think I would do some kind of jiggery poker with that. But if I'm, if I'm honest, if I was knitting it and I wasn't testing the pattern, I would probably only do the collar work to the heel and do a plain foot. So it would actually be less of an issue um, because I'm really lazy and I don't tend to do collar work on the feet of my socks um, because nobody sees them. But I might wear these, especially with shoes that you can see in because it seems kind of a waste. Um, and I also might take this heel out and redo it because my only criticism of the pattern is that it does strain a little bit from here to here on my foot. So I think I would like a deeper heel. You could just counteract that by knitting a few more rows of plain with the purple before doing the shaping. So I think I can probably unpick this, save the purple yarn, put this back on my needles. Um, or just unravel to the first row of the purple so I'm not worried about losing my colour work or even the second round of the purple, because I think you knit two rows of plain before faffing. Um, and then I would just knit a couple more rounds of plain and then do the heel. I might do the second one like that and see if it does strain a bit less. And then if that's the case, do that. Or I might have a little bit more of a think about how I could do a thicker heel. If you have any thoughts about how I could do a DK heel and toe, do say because I haven't knit the second sock yet so I'm not adverse to taking out my heel and toe and doing that um, because she has her photos for the test knit so um, and, you know I tested the pattern and everything like that and it was fine so but yeah I think it's absolutely gorgeous I really really like it um, it feels so soft and squishy 
so I think I do need to get on and knit the second one because it does really feel like a this time of year project um but I don't know if I'm going to get that done by the end of November or not probably not if I'm going to start faffing with different heels and toes I don't know share your thoughts with me please because I'd be interested to know if anybody's got any extra tips or tricks oh the other thing is to say the short row heel is does make the colour work situation on the sock really easy I was trying to do the colour work on the foot of the um, fairy ring socks by Katie Greenbean and doing a heel flap gusset decrease with the colour work I found too much for my brain um, and this is called the magical mycelium socks so there we go magical mycelium so that's my last kind of finished object although I'm about as far along in my next one because it's also a paired item and I've done one. So let's share that. I shared in my autumn plans knitting, and I think I shared this, that I wanted to knit Persephone mittens by Emily Foden and I have knit just over one. So I am using a yarn that I bought at John Arbon's Open Mill Weekend and it's this really gorgeous um variegated slightly yarn by telling fiber um i should have brought the tag with me and i haven't but i think it was the resolute base and it's in the color sky ross which i think is a game of thrones reference i'm not sure it's a shame it wasn't a color name from um his dark materials because she does stories and books so probably sky ross isn't game of thrones because I don't, I think she does books and that's why it's telling yarns, not TV. I could be wrong. Um, and so I would have liked a His Dark Materials name, but this colour is really gorgeous. So it's got lots of different shades of blue, brown, grey, yellowy sort of beige tones. And I, and it's a four ply. And so I'm knitting my Persephone mittens with those. And so it's got like a bit of lace here, a bit of lace here, and then it said something about maximum limit reached. I don't know what that means. That worries me. I think that means I'm going to have to edit these together after all. Oh dear. I hope that doesn't mean it's going to cut this into two videos. Um, Sorry about that face. Yes, so that's throwing me off a bit I'm sorry um really lovely but I did have some problems knitting these that's how it looks on so I first cast it on on the recommended needles and I didn't do a swatch and so you can tell me off if you want to which is 2.75 millimeter needles and I knit this much and I thought for my really skinny wrist that just looks really big like look at all the air gap so I got really stressed about it and thought I'll go down to 2.5 millimeter needles and if I'm honest it made virtually no difference which I find a bit odd like that little bit of difference that's it so these are still quite big and so I got halfway through through this and I was like this still is quite big um, and that's because they are designed to be worn over a mitten liner which I wasn't going to knit I was just going to knit the mittens but as I started knitting it I thought who am I kidding I'm not somebody who can wear a four ply weight mitten and be all right in the book it says the mitten liners are for those extra cold days I don't know what person can wear a four ply mitten in the winter and be warm enough although they do feel like they might trap quite a lot of air I think the minute the cold descends, I eat now, these won't be thick enough. So I thought I'm not going to stress any more about sizing. I am just going to knit, as recommended, the mitten liners as well. So I'll share those in a second because um, they're designed to be worn together. So I am on my second mitten. I'm about here. So about the same amount that I'd knit on the bigger one which I'm now going to unravel um, and I will use the yarn so I've kind of got this situation going on <laughs> so that's 2.75 millimeters and I'm on my 2.5 with these so yes 
And um, I read on Ravelry that a couple of people thought it was a really like complicated, difficult knit and it took a really long time. Now, my pro tip for patterns like this is to photocopy the pattern and cut it up <laughs> because it's written something like knit X amount of stitches, place marker, do row one from line B, knit X amount of stitches, do row one from line a knit x amount of stitches do row line one from line c or whatever as an a b and c on in order um they're like back to front or like i don't know it's like a c b or something like that um and so then they're all in a line on the first page and then the instructions that you're looking at um are on another page and for me that's too much back and forth and i can see it would take forever if you're looking back and forth and there's too much information to memorise because it's a four row repeat on each one. So, and some of them are quite easy. Some of them are only like a two stitch repeat or something like that. And that one's quite intuitive. Um, but like, it just gets really complicated. Thankfully, unlike the East Wind, they are all like line one for all three letters, line two for all three letters. You don't get in a situation where you're doing line one of one and line three of another and line five of another. And um, which the East Wind is a bit like that. And that really fried my brain. Um, this is it makes more sense so that makes it a bit easier so I photocopied it and I cut out the, the explanations of the three like line sections so they call each of these bits like line a b and c for example like one of them being at the back and I sellotaped them to the top of my pattern the photocopy not the book in the order that I needed and so now I'm on the second mitt I've cut them out again and I've taped them back in the right order for the second mitt because the order's changed. I do believe there's no ABC, so it's a bit easier. But it means I can look at the instructions and the ABC line explanation, um, and I don't have to keep flicking back and forth. I've just got one page, and that makes it so much easier. I would show you, but I'd be giving away the pattern, so I can't. So at the same time, I am knitting one of the mitten liners. So, it will be this gorgeous combination where this rolled hem sticks just out the bottom and so you have this really soft fluffy white cream and then this scalloped edge which is a folded over scalloped edge and well, that's another thing sorry a lot of people commented it was really fiddly because you do you knit a few rows you do the scallop detail you knit a few rows you fold it over and you knit two together to like um attach it to create this neat stretchy edge. Whenever I have to do something like that, like with a neckline on it, a jumper or anything like that, I use a crochet hook to do it. It's much easier than using a knitting needle. And even with a crochet hook, this was a bit faffy because my yarn wanted to spring apart. So I um, used removable stitch markers to pin it all down. And then I did it like that and that made it a bit easier. It was still tedious, but not as bad. So that's my pro tip for you. Um, and so I am knitting these ones, the mitten liners, on 2.25. So my mittens I'm doing on 2.5 and these I'm doing on 2.25. In a really gorgeous light fingering yarn that's 60% merino wool, 20% alpaca and 20% silk by... I don't know who this is by. I'm not really sure what the name of it is. Maria Sol Peru and it's just been in my stash it feels gorgeous and I'm holding it with a strand or oh, actually at this point two strands of random mohair I had in my stash I had all these little like balls of um, either single or two strands of mohair held together that had been wrapped up that were left over from a relative's project um, and I thought they went together really well and I did manage to attach one of the balls of two stranded into two balls of single stranded, but this one I couldn't separate. So up to here it was single stranded, and now for the hand it's going to be double stranded. I think it's gone out of focus. Um, so the hand's going to be a bit thicker, and I hope that's going to be okay with the fit underneath the other mitten. Um, but it will have to be. I have no choice because that's what I've got. I think the other mitten will be half this colour of mohair and half a cool shade of white because I don't think I've got enough of this like warm white to um, do both. 
and that's where we're going at the moment. Don't think I can put my mitten on over the top because the knitting needles are in here. Um, oh good, the light's coming back. Um, and it's so soft. So yeah, but I mean because you're only going to see this bit, it doesn't bother me if the hand is like a separate shade of white. It's a bit of a shame, but it means that that knit is kind of free because it's all stash and rejects. Oh, I've just dropped a stitch. And um, I really don't want to buy any more yarn at the moment, so that seemed like a good way of using those mohair scraps up. And that's everything I'm working on at the moment. I really wanted to cast on the soiree, um, but I haven't. I think I'm going to get the craft fair out of the way, and the next day I'll be knackered. <laughs> and that Sunday I will treat myself to casting on the soiree because I think I'll be on a come down and I can spend the whole of that Sunday in bed being lazy, working on the jumper and then hopefully I'll get a good stab into it and then I'll put it aside until Christmas when I've done all my presents and I'll pick it up in earnest then. So my soiree, I am going to knit out of this lace, heavy lace apple door by John Arben and I think it's in the colour Pippin Down, I think it was called. And this mohair by Cocon. And in true style, I don't have quite enough to knit it, so my sleeves might have to be slightly shorter, or my body slightly shorter, I'm not sure. I need to look at the pattern and see what I could feasibly get away with, because um, I think it's knit, bo knit bottom down, which makes it a bit more of a challenge. But I'm about 150 metres short, which I think is quite a lot. So we shall see. Hopefully I won't run out too soon. Um, but that's kind of like... I mean, the colour combination is so good. Oh, <laughs> that's what I think my Christmas knitting is mainly going to consist of. The soiree, and then I'm going to cast on some Christmas socks. Which I think I might wait and share next time. I was going to bring the yarns and show you and I've forgotten. And this is 45 minutes now of me just chatting and gibbering, so um, I should probably stop. <laughs> because um, it was meant to be a short update and it's not been. So I think that will be my next treat of a cast on because I want to finish my mitten liners, my Persephone mittens and um, the Maya cardigan I'm knitting for my mother-in-law before Christmas. And I've got to make some other Christmas presents which probably won't be knitting. I've had some sewing disasters lately which I'm not going to catch up on now but maybe um, I will do another craft video in a couple of weeks and catch you up where I am with my other crafts. If I don't get too snowballed with life stuff, we will have to see, I'm afraid. So I'm gonna leave it there. I will definitely be creating some kind of festive content. Definitely not Vlogmas. I don't have the time for that, I'm really sorry. Um, but definitely at least one festive episode. I'm trying to up like upload maybe once a fortnight at the moment, aiming kind of for a Sunday morning. Um, let me know what you think about that. Like if you think that that's, um, but a nice pattern, I don't know. I did forget to say, I am going to be sharing some festive stitch markers on Ko-Fi soon, this week. They might already be up. Um, and I'm using them on my mittens because a mitten on some mittens seemed really appropriate. Um, I'm gonna stop. Happy knitting everybody, and I hope you have a really good rest of your weekend. Goodbye. I thought I pressed stop, I did not.